Welcome to Cultivating Washington, the history of our state's food, land, and people. Food is central to our survival. It always has been. We're going to use the history of securing food to better understand the history of our state and the people living here. When did farming begin in Washington State? That's not an easy question to answer. Native tribes expertly managed natural resources such as fish, plants, and wild game to provide food for thousands of years before there was a Washington State. Farming in the form of planting seeds in the ground and harvesting crops was introduced in our state by early immigrants from Europe just 200 years ago. In a sense, there are two answers to that question. That is a result of having different worldviews. A worldview is what you believe about the world and your place in it. Let's explore each and see how these two worldviews start to meet in our state in 1840. Native Northwest peoples have always relied on available food sources in the area where they lived. Salmon, elk, and other fish and game were important food sources at the time and still are today. The Chinookan peoples of the Lower Columbia fished salmon with spears and nets in great numbers during spring and fall runs. Coastal tribes harvested shellfish, like clams and oysters. Many coastal and Columbia Plateau tribes raised horses for travel and hunting. Nutritious native berries and roots like wapato and camas were also important food sources for many tribes. The soil and climate of the region was an ideal place for a diversity of plants and animals. The land was abundant with trees, wildlife, fish, and rich soils. Tribes learned how to sustainably manage these resources by expertly monitoring the amount and timing of harvest. Nearly all of the tribes shared a belief in a creator of all things with whom they made a sacred promise to care for the land, its resources, and all the living creatures who share the land with them. This is known by many tribes in the region as a covenant with the creator and was a central belief in their worldview then as it is now. This worldview is represented in the saying credited to Chief Seattle, all things are connected. In the 1770s, native peoples encountered people who held a very different worldview, Europeans. Stories of bountiful resources and riches in the Pacific Northwest began to gain interest as the few early Spanish and British explorers brought stories back to Europe. Increased wealth in European nations led to the development of new industries, like fashion, that drove trends to extensively use beaver pelts and other furs. This created financial incentives for companies to send people and supplies to the Pacific Northwest to trap beaver by the thousands and to send their hides around the world to make fanciful hats and coats. The Hudson Bay Trading Company was the most prominent of these companies. They established forts along the waterways, such as Fort Vancouver on the Lower Columbia River, to provide a base of operations for their Northwest business. The Hudson Bay Trading Company started some of the first farms in the state to raise food for employees and to trade with native peoples. This way, they did not have to rely on ships bringing food from other parts of the world. Being self-reliant is an important belief in the European worldview. They brought their tools and practices for growing crops and raising domesticated livestock. These practices had been the primary source of food in Europe for centuries. In the European worldview, natural areas were seen as unproductive until the trees were removed and the soil tilled to plant crops. The other early European-American pioneers in our state were religious missionaries. Many missionaries started farms to secure and share food with native peoples and invite them to learn how to grow crops. Generally, during the period of fur trade and initial settlement up to 1840, European-American settlers and the native peoples worked together to test how crops and vegetables could be grown successfully in the region. Their pioneering efforts ensure you and your family have enough food. 
The native Northwest peoples and European settlers held very different worldviews. Prior to 1840, these differences weren't an issue because there were so few pioneers. That, however, will change soon, as will the amount and types of food grown in the state. But first, let's pause and explore the year 1840 in what would become our home state of Washington.